The power of now is the power of later. The universal condition of all experience is before you know it, or everything happens before you know it. While much has been made of the phrase, the power of now, it is common to get its significance wrong. Now does not refer to the experience of the moment. Sorry, but it's true. No one perceives the experience of the moment. No one. It's impossible. Why? Because everything happens before we know it. Everything. Let me explain. Everything we experience comes through our senses, and everything we sense goes through our nervous systems, from eyes, ears, skin, tongue, nose, muscles and joint sensors, to our brains, each of us having a multi-part brain. Nerve impulses travel at about 30 meters per second, a limited speed. That's just the raw sensory information. To that, add the time needed to process and recognize our sensory information, anywhere from about a quarter of a second to many seconds, minutes for puzzles or chess moves, hours, days, or years for particularly naughty problems. In all cases, everything happens before we know it. While that may seem like hair-splitting in some cases, I call upon you to wonder. What's going on in that interval before recognition occurs, that moment when we experience something? That question should intrigue you. It does me. You see, in that time interval between an event and our sensory recognition of it, there is no experience of it. Our experience takes that time interval to fade into our awareness and recognition. For now, let's say that by time we recognize an experience, it's already past. Far-reaching implications come from that simple observation. Implications about our senses, our minds and emotions, our free will, and our very existence. This piece is about those implications. Action and Reaction Time We might be tempted to think that we experience our own actions immediately, but that's also untrue. Our experiences of our own actions also come through our senses. That means that we act before we know it. Now you might also be tempted to think that we experience the will to act which precedes our visible actions immediately. But that's also untrue. We experience the will to act as a moment of moving from rest or unreadiness to act into a state of readiness which always involves a rise of muscular tension felt as the sense of will or intention. We experience that rise of tension through our senses with the same time lag as before. This argument seems a bit easier to accept when we think of reaction time. Reaction time is the interval between an event and our response to it. Think in terms of slamming on the brakes of your car to avoid that car running a red light. That reaction happens automatically and before we know it. We can accept that. However, in general, the will to act arises before we know it. We know it only after it has already arisen. I'm sorry, in a sense, to have deprived you of the comfort of your notion of free will. I say, in a sense, because on one hand you may be feeling somewhat dismayed, but on the other I haven't deprived you of anything. Things go on as before. Your sense of free will arises and will continue to arise as before. Only now you know it as a very convincing sense of free will, a simulation of free will, leading to the myth of free will, even as you experience what you have identified as the experience of free will, which is a sensation that happens before you know it. You've lost nothing. Even your knowing that occurred before you knew it. What does this do to feelings of guilt, shame, regret, remorse? 
Nothing, actually. Those feelings arise before you know it. What of ethical practices and moral disciplines? They go on as before. Your decision to engage them having arisen before you knew it. What of thinking? If you've ever meditated and tried to quiet the mind, you've probably noticed that thoughts arise before you know it. Then all you're left with is the hammer of the mind trying to flatten the nails of thought. It's already too late. The thought's up, and flattening the nails of thought is another thought. The mind stream happens before you know it. Tough luck. Action time, reaction time, it's all the same. The difference being a matter of speed, which is always before you knew it anyway. Let's backtrack a moment. Let's say that our knowing of something occurs instantaneously with our experiencing of it. What of the occurring of it before we experienced it? Can we say that the occurrence existed before we experienced it? We might reason one way or another about that. Objective evidence suggests that it did exist. Subjective experience, however, leaves us with no way of saying, since we have no subjective experience of something before we experience it. That's obvious, if confusing. Remember, we're backtracking. What exists before our experiencing of something? Remembering that our senses always introduce a time lag, what is there at the very start of that time lag? No time lag, no experience. The power of now, before the experience. In that sense, there is no power of now because there is no experience of now. And if there were such an experience, it would be because of the time lag, the power of later. In fact, all power is the experience of the power of later. Of the power of now, there is no experience, and therefore there is no power of now. Having cleared that up, let me summarize. All experience is the power of later due to the time lag of the senses, even of the inner senses. No experience is the power of now. So if you think you've identified or are living the power of now, you're mistaken. You're living the power of later. If you think you're living in the power of now, you're also mistaken. The now, if it exists, remains forever unknown, everything being sensed later. Later is an interesting word for a very special reason. It implies persistence or duration in time, the passage of time. To experience the passage of time, we need one essential thing. Memory. The paradox of living beings. Memory. To carry an event from the unrecognized state of unknown now, through the senses, to a state of recognition, requires time, and therefore memory. For my purposes, I define memory as the persistence of things, patterns of function, of behavior, of action, of movement, of sensation. Persistence is the essence of memory, whatever the form. In technology, memory chips store data as patterns of electrical charge that persist. So that's all there is to memory, whether short-term or long-term, whether fluid or fixed. Persistence. Without memory, no experience is possible. If it fades out before it arrives, before recognition, no experience. That goes along with the idea that sensation always involves a time lag. Time lag, memory. They go together. Memory is necessary for experience to survive the time lag. Living beings' sense of self-existence is a changing aggregation of memories. Living beings' sense of action is of lagging memories changing. Memories always lag behind, but they're always changing. But because everything we experience is the power of later, which we take to be now, the accumulation of memories is all we have of our experience of now. But it is not now. It's already too late. It's already happened. Again, to summarize, what we experience as now are always memories, albeit relatively fresh ones. Another wrinkle exists about living beings and memory. 
all living beings can experience is change. And to experience change, we need a memory of how it was different. Try the little experiment. Gaze fixedly at an object for about 30 seconds. You'll notice that somewhere in that interval, the object fades or washes out from your vision. The same phenomenon applies to sounds. Live near the ocean, the train tracks, or in the city. With smells, with body feelings, with everything. With persistence, they fade from our awareness. That's also the phenomenon of taking things for granted. Memory is central to our sense of existence, but our sense of existence is not central. Central exists at the root or source of everything that exists, which is before the time lag, before knowledge. But just as we confuse later with now, we confuse the center, which is unknown, with the periphery, known after the time lag. We confuse existence, which is the doing or happening of everything subject to the time lag, with being, which is before all doing. We confuse our memories with now. Said another way, we don't know why we do what we do, regardless of rationalizations or explanations. Why? Because we do it before we know it, and we're even being before we know it. Remember your birth? Just kidding. Not really. Happened before you knew it, didn't it? Same with death and everything in between. So if we were to describe our essential nature, we might say that we are each a warp or pocket in the field of space-time. We are a time warp, each of us, in which our own nature is unknown to us. Now, before the time lag, from which everything we do happens before we know it, and without knowing why. Even reasons why come to us before we know it. Ever had an original or creative thought? Where did it come from? So our essential nature remains unknown and unknowable, but our memories, which accumulate after the fact, give us the synthetic experience of being, of free will, of knowing, of responsibility, of creativity, etc., etc., etc. This knowing will not avail you. Why? Because it has occurred after the fact, before you knew it, like everything else. Even after the fact happens, before you know it. Twenty twenty hindsight. Where does that leave us? In mystery. In wonder. Notice when you have an emotion that it arose before you knew it. When you have a thought, notice that it arose before you knew it. Notice that events arise before you know it. Notice that the effort to get behind it all to notice or be the source arises before you know it, as does the confounding of the paradox that gets you to give up, which you do before you know it. But because all things arise before you know it, as memories, they are expressions of mystery, our own nature, which is now but unknown, and later, all that you know before you know it. The power of now is the power of later, and the mystery is all that we know.